Welcome to this Tutor to You AQA A Level Sociology Paper 3 walkthrough video looking at a 20 mark evaluated debate question for Paper 3. In this video, we're going to focus on the debate between practical, ethical, and theoretical issues in the choice of research method and topic. The question on the screen has been written by Tutor to You for the purposes of this video, but does reflect the style that is present on the AQA A Level Paper 3 on theory and methods. It is a 20 mark question and it asks students to apply material from item C and your knowledge, evaluate the view that theoretical issues are the most important consideration when sociologists choose their research topic and method. It's presented with an item and the item says, sociologists make decisions about research methods and topics based on a range of theoretical factors. Theoretical concerns relate to how the research of you society the purpose of research and the type of data they wish to collect. Other sociologists suggest that ethics and practical issues are more important in conducting research and choosing topics. Now this can be quite a tricky question, but it is actually simpler than many students will think. Essentially, it's asking you to compare practical, ethical and theoretical issues and decide whether theoretical issues are the most important when you choose your research topic and method. So let's have a look at how we might answer this question. First of all, we need to decode the question and look at the varying views on this debate. So there are a number of differing viewpoints that we have on this debate. First of all, the idea that supports the claim theoretical issues are the most important. We could potentially state that ethical issues are more important than theoretical issues. We could also talk about practical issues and how they are more important than either ethical or theoretical issues. Or we could conclude that all have equal merit and that researchers need to take into account all three when they are conducting research and choosing their topic. Now, I would suggest that this is a really good conclusion for this debate, that all have equal merit. It is very much a sitting on the fence conclusion. However, it shows a sophisticated knowledge of sociology to sort of like say that actually we cannot view these in isolation on their own. If we look at the four different perspectives on this question, so are theoretical, are ethical, are practical, and that they all have equal merit. And we'll leave this one for our conclusion. But let's focus on our theoretical view first. Well, we could suggest that the choice of topic is influenced by an individual's theoretical view. Marxists will pick social inequality. Feminists will pick gender inequality. Interpretivists will look to side with the underdog in society and therefore will pick topics that are linked into marginalized groups. We could also talk about the methodology. Is this the most important part of a sociologist's work? Are they a positivist? Are they an interpretivist? Are they going to use a mixed methodology? Is this the most important consideration? The type of data that they want to collect? Do they want to look for quantitative or qualitative data? Or do they want to mix the two? And their motivations. What is the purpose behind their research? Do they want to view sociology? Do they want to view society very scientifically and come up with solutions to problems? Or do they want to act as commentators and give a voice to those who are unheard? These are some of the theoretical considerations you might include in this essay. With our ethics, we might consider the participants' needs very much linked into things like feminist methodologies and how it looks to empower those that are being researched. We may think about some of the legal requirements, for example, storing data or having DBS checks if you're dealing with young people. We can also talk about ethical guidelines and the importance of ethical guidelines and how many research proposals don't make it through the ethical guidelines stage. And so therefore ethics are important. And we can also talk about the sensitivity of the topic and how that might influence the method that is chosen and the scale of the research that takes place. 
We can also talk about our practical issues. Who is going to be funding this research? And is this the most important part of selecting the research method or topic? The time scale, do we need this research to be done on a regular basis? Do we need it to be done quickly and often? How are we gonna access participants? Unless we access a certain group, we're not gonna be able to commit to that research. So that might be a huge consideration. And the researcher characteristics. How does the researcher's own personal characteristics influence their choice of topic and their choice of method? And then for our conclusion, what we might look to do is combine some of these factors and say that actually we cannot view these in isolation. What we need to do is we need to look at them all together because they all have a certain amount of importance. And I would leave this for your conclusion. We're going to mine the item now for some clues. So we can see here that we've already highlighted how the researcher views society and we could possibly link this into their theoretical preference. Do they take a conflict view, a consensus view? How will this influence their research? Are they Marxist, feminist, functionalist? How will this influence their research? And is this the most important part of it? The purpose of the research, this could be another hook that we use. Are they looking to prove that we can study society scientifically or are they looking for the individual motivations of, of people to give a voice to the underdog and the type of data are they going to look for quantitative or qualitative data are they going to use primary or secondary research methods and then in our second part of the item ethics and practical issues so are these more important Whilst it's named theoretical issues as being the most important consideration, this is very much a debate question. So we should use ethical and practical issues in here and make a judgment on which one is the most important. Now, many students ask about introductions. I would say it is a personal preference. If you are going to use an introduction, what I would do is set the scene. So in here, I've set the scene on this debate by saying when sociologists choose what to research and how to research it, they must consider a wide range of factors. Theoretical concerns, such as whether they want their research to be valid or reliable, or whether they adopt a positivist or interpretivist stance are certainly important as stated in item A. However, sociologists must also take into account practical and ethical concerns, such as time, funding, access and harm to participants. This essay will examine the extent to which theoretical issues are the most important factor in these decisions. So let's look at a sample paragraph of how we might set out the argument that the theoretical issue is the most important. We can start by stating that one key theoretical issue that influences choice of method is whether a sociologist adopts a positivist or interpretivist approach. But we need to develop this. Positivists, like Durkheim, aim to uncover objective facts about the social world and therefore prefer quantitative methods, such as structured interviews or questionnaires, which provide reliable data that can be replicated. We now need to use an example to show that we understand why. For example, Durkheim's study of suicide used official statistics to identify patterns and correlations between suicide rates and levels of social integration. So we're bringing in some of our knowledge of sociology from elsewhere in the specification. You may have done Durkheim's study of suicide when you're looking at positivism versus interpretivism. Well, this is a big theoretical issue for sociologists and it can influence the choice of methods and the topic that they study. We've talked about positivism. Now we're going to contrast that with interpretivism. In contrast, interpretivists such as Weber aim for Verstehen, a deep understanding of an individual's motives, and therefore favour qualitative methods like participant observations or unstructured interviews, which can produce valid data that captures meaning. We now need to link this into why this is important. If a sociologist values validity, they may choose in-depth interviews. 
even if these are time consuming or hard to replicate, this shows how theoretical concerns can override practical ones supporting the view in the question. So we've given an example of a theoretical issue that we think is pretty important. The, po the debate between positivism and interpretivism and whether we choose validity or reliability in our research. Now we need to evaluate this argument. We're going to make our evaluations explicit. We don't simply say sociologists would suggest that theoretical issues are not the most important. Ethical issues could be. That would be juxtaposed. What we need to do is we need to have a critical evaluation of this idea of positivism versus interpretivism, validity and reliability. We can show some knowledge of contemporary sociology now, because what we would suggest is that many sociologists, particularly in contemporary society, don't always favour positivism or interpretivism, but are more likely to use a combination of methods. So we've put our evaluation here as well. A positivist versus interpretivist debate is important. Many contemporary sociologists use a combination of methods to balance both reliability and validity. This is known as methodological pluralism or using triangulation. We could develop that point about triangulation a little bit further by talking about collecting qualitative and quantitative methods to come to a more valid and reliable conclusion. We can also say that these are all theoretical concerns. So we could counter our evaluation by suggesting that even that choice of methods is influenced by a need theoretically to be more balanced and have higher reliability and validity. We're now going to look at one of the other issues, ethical issues. Ethical issues are another important consideration. For example, researchers must gain informed consent, ensure confidentiality and avoid harm to participants. Big ethical issue. These ethical concerns may make certain methods inappropriate, even if they are theoretically desirable. So now we might use an example of an ethical consideration that needed to be taken into account. And a good study to use when we talk about ethics is Lord Humphrey's Tea Room Trade. Humphrey's study of homosexual behavior in public toilets while offering deep insight, validity, raised serious ethical concerns because he deceived participants and collected data without their consent. For those of you unaware of Humphrey's study, he acted as a watch queen in toilets in New York City parks, um, observing men's homosexual behavior and then visited them in their homes in front of their partners, their heterosexual partners, and asked them questionnaires. He also recorded the license plates of the cars and tracked these people down. And when he was writing, he made many of the high profile men who were involved in this easily identifiable. So it was seen as being very unethical. We need to develop this point a little bit further, though, to show why ethics are important. In today's research climate, ethical approval boards would likely reject such a method, regardless of its theoretical strengths. This shows that ethics can be just as important, if not more so, than theoretical concerns. So now we need to evaluate this point. And again, we are making our explicit evaluations. The key points that we've made that ethical issues can rule out different methods or topics, and this is why they're so important. And we've also talked about Lord Humphrey's research. So we can use both of these to create an explicit evaluation. However, some sociologists argue that ethical guidelines are not fixed and how they are interpreted can vary between context or over time. For example, while Humphrey's research would likely be considered unethical today, in the 1960s, it was seen by some as groundbreaking. So we've referred to Humphrey's research and we've referred to the idea that ethical issues can rule out methods or topics by stating that they're not fixed. For giving a voice to a hidden group, this suggests that ethical concerns, though important, are sometimes shaped by social norms and what is considered acceptable at the time. What we said here is that ethical guidelines can change and therefore they may not be as important as theoretical concerns. 
Now to get into the 17 to 20 band on this type of question, you need a range of points that demonstrate sophisticated knowledge and understanding of the material. So you would probably create one set of arguments for theoretical, one set of arguments for ethical, one set of arguments for practical, and evaluate those showing a depth of analysis and explicit evaluation of the argument that you've put forward. And we need to draw appropriate conclusions. And we're just gonna give you a bit of advice on conclusions. In our exam gold, we're going to look at the idea that in Evaluate the View essays, they often present two opposing sides of a debate. We've already discussed in this video that the three main views that practical, ethical and theoretical considerations are each the most important can create a compromise position where we suggest that each of them are as important as each other. This is common in many sociological debates where there is this compromise position, a third way, or in this instance, a fourth way, that offers features of all of the sides of the debate and is a really useful way to show that you understand the bigger picture in sociology. I've created this kind of hybrid conclusion that takes into account all of the different factors and suggests that it cannot be disentangled. And I'm going to show you that now. In conclusion, while theoretical issues clearly play a central role and influence in sociologists' choice of topic and method, as seen through debates over validity and reliability, positivism and interpretivism, and the purpose of research, they're not always the most important factor. Practical issues like time, access and funding, as well as ethical considerations, often constrain or override theoretical preferences. Therefore, although theory is a major influence, it exists alongside and interacts with other considerations. What I'm showing to the examiner is that there is no one simple answer, which is a big thing in sociology. Often our most reasonable conclusions are that we need to use more than one way or that there is more than one consideration that we need to take into account. And that is quite a sophisticated conclusion for an 18 year old doing this exam to make. That concludes this Tutor to You AQA A-Level Sociology Paper 3 walkthrough video on a 20 mark evaluator debate question, looking at the debate between practical, ethical and theoretical issues and the choice of topic and method. Thanks for watching.